Hey everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video where in this video I'm going to show you how I love watercoloring die cuts for a whole new look. Now you could certainly recreate the card that I'm going to be sharing today by simply die cutting colored cardstock, but I love the organic look of watercoloring my die cuts because it gives you more options for shading and adding texture. It's a lot of fun to be able to do this. So I hope you're inspired by the idea that I'm going to share. And also in today's video, by the way, I am using new products from Simon Says Stamps Just For You release, which was just revealed. There's a lot of great stuff in this release and one of those products is the Mushroom Stems die. This is one of the main dies I'm using today along with a couple of other sets from Simon Says Stamp that were previously released. One is the Layered Crocus Stems and the other is the Layered Warbler. I'm die cutting all of these pieces from watercolor paper. In this particular case, I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper. It's one of my favorites. And as I'm die cutting, I'm trying to keep all the pieces still nested inside the paper because that actually does make the watercoloring a little bit easier. For my watercoloring, I'm using a mix of Daniel Smith and Windsor and Newton watercolors. That's what I have in my stash, but you could use any watercolors you want. I just happen to really like these. And I'm just using a mix of different earthy tones to create some really cool colored mushrooms. I'll also color the crocuses. I'm going to use teal for that. And then the bird is going to be a mix of gold and blue. When you're coloring the die cuts, I do recommend using a smaller brush because that'll allow you to get more detail with your shading. Also, I like to play around with using a dry brush technique. Sometimes I'll use a little less water and that allows me to get some harsher areas on my water coloring. As you can see on the mushroom and some of the flowers, I didn't color the entire piece. I allowed there to be some white space, which actually gives a really unique texture effect. It also helps add to the shading so you get that lighter and darker area, which is a lot of fun. And as I'm coloring, I'm just making sure to keep in mind which pieces are going to be on top and which will be underneath. For something like the mushrooms, I did try to add a little bit more darker shading on the under part of the mushrooms. That way when I layer up the layer on top, it will actually make the mushroom look a little bit more shaded and dimensional. To put all these pieces together, you could use just some liquid glue, but I like just a tad bit of dimension. And that is super easy to create by using Simon Says Stamps Thin 3D Foam Squares. I utilize these a lot because they add just enough depth without adding a ton of bulk. So this card really, even though I put a ton of foam tape on all these pieces, this card is not bulky. And for some areas like this little beak on the bird, I did switch over to some liquid glue. But what I really love about these layered die cuts is that you have a lot of cool layer and dimension with these. And I think that looks so neat. Again, like I said earlier in the video, don't forget that if you don't care to do watercoloring, you could of course just use some plain old cardstock or you could color your die cuts with a different medium. Pencils or markers are another great way to add color. So I have all my elements. Now we're ready to put this onto something. I'm using this leafy edges background cling and I'm gonna use this top layer to create a little leafy corner on my background. This is going to go behind my mushrooms, flowers, and bird, but it's going to add just a little bit of depth and make the scene come together. So I stamped that with embossing ink and then with white embossing powder, I sprinkled that over top, set it with my heat tool, and now it's ready to be watercolored. It's a little hard to see right now, but as I start adding the color, I'm going to reveal those leaves. If you don't want to watercolor them, you could ink blend. That would also look really nice. For the watercoloring, I'm making it really loose. I want this to be quite a bit less detailed than everything that's going on top because of course this is the background. So imagine this kind of almost being out of focus. So I'm adding color and using a lot of water so that way it's super soft. But then I also came in with a baby wipe and dabbed off certain areas to lighten those colors and smooth things out a bit more. It's a damp baby wipe so that helps lift some of the color and soften it. Once that dried, I did add some splatters and that's going to add a little bit more of that texture feel. It also ties in well with the rest of the organic watercoloring that we have for our die cuts. I'm attaching all of my die cuts with more thin 3D foam squares. This way they have some lift off of the background. I layered the bird on top of the mushrooms and then the flowers I tucked around the mushrooms but also allowed some of the leaves to actually sit on top. It gives a little bit more depth and feels like the mushrooms and flowers are growing together. 
Now I thought this would be a fun added detail which were to add some gold effects to my coloring. So with a very small paintbrush and my fine tech gold watercolors, I'm adding simple little gold details in certain spots. Most of it was dots, but on the bird, I did kind of feather in the color just to kind of go with the soft feather texture of the bird. And I love how that turned out. When it catches the light, it just gives your eye something cool to glance at. It's like, oh, wait, what's that? So continuing with that gold theme, I'm going to add a simple sentiment. This is a new sentiment strip set from Simon's Stamp. And I'm also, by the way, using the new Positively Everyday scissors. They're so good for cutting things like foil and paper, but especially foil, it's so smooth when it cuts. Now I did switch over to the fine detail scissors to trim out my sentiment. And then I'm laying a sentiment along with some foil on top of a piece of cardstock inside of my carrier sheet. I like to put cardstock inside of my carrier sheet because it helps give a little bit more pressure for the sentiment strips, but depending on your machine, you might not need that. So after foiling, I have my sentiment here and it did overfoil just a little bit because these are a fine detailed sentiment. So I just took a brush to clean that up. I actually ended up changing my mind and using the thinking of you sentiment instead of hey there friend, but I did the exact same process of foiling. So I took my sentiment strip and now I'm going to glue that down onto my card and I just adhered that with a few more foam squares. All right, the last finishing step was I pulled out these really unique sequins from Studio Katia. I have them linked below in the video description along with all the other products that I'm using today, but they're like this iridescent glittery disc. It's really, really pretty. And I thought that would go well with the whimsical woodland scene we've got going here. So that finishes up today's card using new products from Simon's to Stamps Just For You release and a technique of watercoloring your die cuts for a new look. I think it's a really unique way to give your die cuts a completely different feel than if you were to cut them out with cardstock. So I hope you liked it. I hope you were inspired and we'll try this out too. If you're interested in all those supplies that I mentioned today, you can find them below in the video description or over on my blog. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending time with me. I'll be back soon with more to share with you all, but until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.